morning. Happy Tuesday, everybody. Okie dokie. Let's get finished setting up. Let's wait for the uh, phone to catch up. Yep, yeah, that looks fine. That should all be okay, I think. Oh, it does take a while to catch up from uh, me doing something for the phone to catch up with it. Okay, there we go. Good morning, Christine. Morning, everyone. Right, I'm going to sit myself down. Good morning, Donna. How are you? Good morning, Andrine. Morning, everyone. Good morning, Jane. And good morning, Yvonne. Ooh, Yvonne is uh, ready and raring to go. Where's my coffee, Yvonne? <laughs> Got a tea. You've had a coffee. You've probably had two or three coffees, haven't you? Me, yeah. Mm. <laughs> I know that quite a few people were busy this morning, but uh, that is fine. The video will be saved onto the page and then uploaded to YouTube eventually. Uh, little circles going round and around and around. Good morning, Penny. Oh, let's bet you have. As long as you're okay and uh, you're not in any pain or anything, Donna. Okay, so I take it that everyone can hear okay. Yeah, That's yeah. good. <laughs> I know you can hear me. <laughs> so everybody can hear me. Thumbs up, yeah? <laughs> okay, so today, um, I mean, I'm making... Um... <laughs> <laughs> Good idea, Yvonne. Good morning, Elizabeth. Yeah, I know, I mean, I'm making door hangers today, but any MDF shape you've got, you can adapt it to, that's fine. Um, I think we all have bits of MDF hanging around in our stash. I was quite surprised we managed to have uh, worked through quite a, quite a bit of ours, because we did have a load at one point. Um, we've got loads and loads of little wooden embellishments. <laughs> So it's uh, thinking of ways to use those as well. Oh, thank you, Donna. A bit bunged up today, so hopefully I won't keep sneezing and stuff. Good morning, Vanessa. Oh, morning. Oh no, there was so oh, much Elizabeth. about Elizabeth. Hello, Julie. Oh, oh, does that mean I have to behave myself now? Yeah. Boss is in the house, people, so no regrets. <laughs> okay, so, yep, yeah, like I was saying, it doesn't have to be a door hanger, whatever bit of MDF you've got or I mean there's there's loads of options out there for using MDF apart from artist palettes it would seem because I couldn't find any thank you Julie so yeah any any piece of MDF that you've got you can adapt this to and it will work just as well it's just the actual process of working with it oh thank you Denise out yeah that would be a good idea <laughs> yeah. 
shut up, leave me alone. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so this is the one we're going to make today. Just pretty, box standard, MDF shape. And then we'll have a look, closer look at those, those two at the end. There you go, just some different ideas of what you can do with MDF. I didn't want to uh, to make too many because I'm afraid of being cut off in my prime like we were a couple of weeks ago, which wouldn't be good. So we'll pop those there. Okay, so let's run through our materials that I'll be using. So, um, using a lot of hazels, bits and bobs. Um, so, depending on what you've got, use whatever's in your stash, whatever you'd like to create with. Um, but I've used the Circle Medley stencil for the background, uh, the Circle Medley die set, um, the Sentiment Medley stamp set. We've got the Circle Alphabet Medley stamp set here, which I love. I love these. We've got Backgrounds 2 stencil i am always using that it comes in so handy for adding little, little details and texture to the backgrounds and we've got peter's sunflower i also used um the scent one of the sentiments from uh peter's poppies and cornflowers i've got the mdf door hanger again whatever shape you like um i've got some mdf circles as well because let me show you we have quite a lot this is <laughs> quite a lot of oh, MDF, mdf circles we have a whole plastic drawer full of different mdf shapes <laughs> so if any of my future samples have got MDF on, you know why. It's my fault. <laughs> I'll be using the cartridge paper again for coverage because it just it feels lovely and it's so easy to work with. But you could use card, that's fine. Um, this dress oxide colour I've used for this one is Broken China. And to match with that, the Versifying Claire. I've used Barley Blue, which is one of the new ones, and it's beautiful. Good morning, Pam. Um, I've also used Nocturne as well. I've also had a black fine liner pen and alcohol marker for different bits and pieces. And then you're going to need the usual bits and bobs like a water spray, some kitchen towel, a paper trimmer foam blending tool, um, copy paper, a stamp press, acrylic block, die cutting machine, some scissors, glue, um, a sanding block, an old brush and a water brush. And I, think, toy. I think that's everything and the cuddly toy. Okay, so let's get started. Move that to one side. So now depending on what size your piece of MDF is, you're going to need a piece of the paper, slightly larger. Let's bring this back in again. As you can see, there is a slight overlap all the way around. This makes life easier. Okay, so we're going to start by creating the background for it. For that, I'm going to need my gorgeous stencil which you can see is well and truly loved this is the fun bit <laughs> i think we all love circles don't we we've done we've done this before but I don't think you've uh, we've uh, seen it being done for a little while this is the sort of stamping with a stencil technique so just Lightly going to rub over the back of the stencil. I'm now going to spit some water onto it. I'm just going to do that away from the desk, otherwise, everything will get covered. So, you want a nice 
enough to see it start to pull on there. Okay. And bring this in. Line that up. Place that down so the ink is sinking into the paper. It's great this technique. It's it's like a ready-made background and it's effortless really. I've got some uh, kitchen paper. I'm not seeing this made, but I think it's Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I mean, the first person I saw doing this was uh, was Abs, yeah. Rule and Create, and uh, credit where credit is due. It's definitely not my idea. Okay. And then we can keep the kitchen towels so we'll for another lovely background. I'm going to lift this away. And we've got that gorgeous background and then dab up the rest of the moisture that's left just gonna give the mat a little bit of a clean up not too much because we need to do this again you can pop the excess ink onto another piece of paper if you like so we're not wasting it and then we're going to come in again. Again, just get the oxide. Lightly rubbing over there. Spritz it again. If anyone else can hear what's in the background, they would better be the beautiful birds. <laughs> You've got the beautiful still children. <laughs> <laughs> on again to help soak up the ink and the water and we're pushing it down into the paper as well so it leaves a nice mark you could yes if you've got any dexterity issues or anything um, a brayer works nicely as well. There we go. And we've got this lovely background. There we go. Yes, on. Pam, definitely. It's such a, such a lovely way to use your stencils. Let's get that a quick white open. And give it a proper clean later because there's quite a lot of oxide there and I don't want to go to use it the next time and I've got something uh, completely different colour on there and end up with something that I wasn't expecting it is a quick technique yeah it's just a drying time but because we've mopped it up it's not going to take too long especially this time of the year okay put that to one side bring this up and don't worry at all about any marks you've got there from uh, overlapping because this is the first layer of our background and it really doesn't matter okay so I'll let that dry I have got one that I've done already save a bit of time there we go, so this was this one, and it's great because literally every time you do this, it's going to come out differently. And obviously you can use different colours as well across it, which looks fantastic. So that's that one. Okay. So the next part we're going to do is the stamping to add some more texture and bits and bobs. As you can see, I've still got my uh, my grid in from how I was making the other things. Let's see, I'm the stamp I need. I'm gonna go with the sunflower first. Let's find it. Here we go. I love this sunflower. Mind you, I love any sunflower stamp. 
very difficult to beat Julie's first sunflower stamp. It's lovely to have the the different uh, different ranges now of the the stamps, the sunflowers. Okay, I'm going to use a press because I'm going to use second generation with it. So I'm just going to lift that slightly up from there. this coming in a little bit over the edge you could use the oxide to stamp with but I do prefer to use that's okay Christine no problem up to one side so I'm going to use barley blue which goes so well with this colour so, as always going to give it a nice inking up all over got a bit of uh, copy paper and I'll stamp down onto that first And then down onto what we're making. If you wanted to get another bit of paper and actually uh, do the first generation stamp in first, you could. So you can make two things in one go. I will uh, we'll bring this up so you can have a proper look. I'm just going to them on adjacent sides just to get some detail into the background that's the main thing it's the light press into the copy paper Back in again. I'm just going to move all the way over and up. is one of those things where uh, I can't uh, necessarily see it at first glance but you definitely know it's there it will add to the finished project okay They can hang over the edge of the platform, one up here. That's okay, Caroline. You can hear how juicy that stamp pad is. be fine let me bring that up see if you can uh, see what we've done here so it's given us another layer of lovely texture across the whole pattern okay so that's that one let's give the stamp a little wipe
chose the sunflower because it's a nice big design and will uh, give you good coverage over the the whole thing okay so the next thing we're going to do is stamp the wording this can be anything you like anything text is brilliant for texture so I'm to make your dreams happen you could add any of the text Lots of the dictionary definitions always look uh, always look good with this. So I'm going to start in the bottom right corner. And bring that over so it overhangs a little bit. Going to use the same colour ink. So. I'm gradually going to take this over so it gets smaller as it goes out. Doing um, like tone on tone, color on color. A little bit in here. And then we'll do the same across the bottom. going to uh, focus your eye into the corners and because we're going to do opposite corners it gives your eye somewhere to travel to across the project and a little bit in here piece of MDF in you can determine whereabouts you want to start the other one from because there's no point doing up here because we're going to lose a lot of that so it'll kind of be here let's bring this in Makes sense. And take this out in the other direction. little bit across the top as well just creating a lovely textural background just stamp the bottom bit there there we go yes oh small stamps are brilliant for backgrounds oh 
Oh, that's okay, Bev. Nice to see you. Is it too late to say good day, Bev? Yeah. Good evening. Okay. So let's put that onto one side. Bring this up again so we've got a bit better look. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to glue this onto our hanger. Which Pippa really, really loves. Hey. <laughs> okay. So if there's a if there's a side, there's usually a side on MDF. Thank you, Donna. Where you've got the scorch marks from the laser cutting machine so i usually try and cover that side you can if you want to cover both both sides one decorated one plain and obviously you can paint with mdf you can add gesso and paint you can add gesso and inks there's so much you can do with it but i thought it'd be nice um because i think we've covered paints before so i thought it would be nice to do it with paper and to uh, show you how versatile it is and that way we can get most of our pattern onto here first before we add it on now me being silly i didn't check my glue this morning are you working yeah okay so just got my normal glue that i use for everything i'm gonna get a decent amount on here right up to the edges I wish I did. So we're going to go straight on top. I'm going to put it straight down across the bottom. Make sure I've got equal amount hanging off either side. Good flatten across. Nice press down. I wouldn't use a uh, bone folder for this in case it tears through the card, especially where we've got that uh, aperture underneath. Just go over, use your fingers, you could use a sponge. Pressing this down. Get a nice smooth finish. So, no, this is what it looks like on the back. I'm going to leave this to dry off for a little while before we trim and sand this back and I am a little bit addicted to trimming sanding paper off of MDF so if I run through the other bits <laughs> that I've got ready for this so I've got some more of the paper um, I used my sponge blending tool and just literally popped on some of the same color some of the broken china all across this I uh, cut out two of the squares so if you've got these cut two of these out and then went in and cut each one with that so we've got these two ready to go to add to our decoration the die cuts are brilliant to add into things i also went ahead and stamped 
the sunflower out in black and we're going to add some colour to this. I did the same with the sentiment, so I did the only one missing, we can have a look. So I did the sentiment medley and I thought handmade with love fits perfectly, especially if you want to put uh, something onto your craft room door or something. So that's just stamped onto the paper again, cut out, layered onto some black paper and trimmed around again. It you want it to be neat, it can be neat. But I just go in freehand with that. And then the pieces that came out of here, I've added my letters to. So I've gone with Do Not Disturb, obviously it can be whatever you like. I also cut two lots of the circles out of card to give some depth and to give these a little bit of height so we've got the layer of the letter let's bring it up here so we've got the first layer from here and then two layers of card underneath and i've done that with all of them And then with some of those hundreds of MDF circles, I've used some of the same black paper, it's just ordinary black paper. This is from Pink Frog. Covered the top exactly like we've done with the door hanger. And then I've gone round and sanded the edges and you'll see when I do it with the door hanger in a moment you just get such a beautiful finish than just trimming round with a craft knife or scissors it's so smooth and it, it feels it feels lovely you don't get any edges with it it all blends in seamlessly the only thing I have done is gone round the edge with a uh, black alcohol marker you could colour the whole thing if you wanted to that way so left this one to do so literally I've got the chisel nib again a bit like we did with the embroidery hoop this will finish it off nicely there we go do get a little bit uh, covered in alcohol ink with that but that's fine that washes off no problem there we go Bring that up. you see that there so, lovely little embellishment and that obviously can be any colour you like you could add inks to these as well if you wanted to but it's so straightforward doing it with paper actually I'll show you as soon as we've got some in it did before Got me a little shape get some glue on here press that down trim around it It's quite good for using up scraps of paper and card as well. If you wanted to, you could stamp onto some uh, paper or card first and then cover them. That looks lovely. Okay, just give that time to, to 
to dry off and we can go around that one as well so let's color this one in so i've got uh, got my oxide keep to the theme just going to put a little bit onto this acrylic block just a little squidge and I've got my water brush. Still haven't got the new ones yet. I'm going to give a little squirt of water, I think. Try and get it as fluid as possible. Just a tiny bit. <laughs> yes, boss. Okay. And just very loosely add some colour. Just kind of where... The uh, deeper shaded areas might be. If you get some pooling with this, even better. That adds to it nicely. And just nice and loose. Different MDF shapes, gosh, pretty it much works. anywhere. Yet yeah, the works have a good range. Um, the range. Do different shapes. Hobby craft have quite got got quite a good selection. Um, that's crafty. They have a good good selection of MDF. Um, in fact, if you go on that's crafty, you'll be there for ages because they've got <laughs> they've got lots of stuff. Um, where else will be? Obviously, the usual place that we go to everything for. You will be definitely be there. For a long time, if you go on to uh, Amazon, so depending on what you're after, some some companies do um, do bundles. Um, I know. I mean, the first initial lot that we got was a big bundle with the all the different shapes um, we got from what is now Create and Craft. So it's worth looking to see if they've got anything as well. But uh, yeah, and check with your local suppliers. But you will find MDF pretty much everywhere, I think. Where else might have it? <laughs> Actually, I will take a photograph and yeah. put it on later. <laughs> okay. Oh, yes. It's, I mean, it's great for making your own embellishments because you can decorate them however you like. I'm just going to use up this last little bit in the centre, just dabbing this on quite a bit in the middle there. Oh, oh, well, that sounds fun, isn't it? There we go. That will do us. Just going to push some of that water out, clean that off. I was at a busy day with the grandson with Nana. Did you get up to anything exciting? Oh, brilliant. Love the aquarium. Okay, let's clean this up. I'm going to let this one dry off a little bit as well. You have to tell Jeanette about the story about us not eating fish no more. Yes, we went to Brighton Aquarium for Brian's birthday last year in September and... <laughs> Since then, we haven't been able to bring ourselves to eat any fish. So, yeah. <laughs> They're just so clever. I'd never realised how clever they were. Okay. So now the fun bit. So I've got one of these old uh, stamp blocks, which are brilliant. You can use just ordinary sandpaper if you want to, whatever you normally use. But a block will make it a lot easier. 
and we are literally going to go around the edge. Sorry if this sounds horrendous on the microphone. And this will give you... Hi Irene! This will give you a lovely, smooth, neat finish. with this for some of the uh, areas just literally going off the edge of this you will be able to feel what's underneath dust at all. And pop a mask on. Make sure you've got a lot of air circulating. The new guys are brilliant. a bit easier than literally just go like that to make it smoother yeah obviously the the thicker the card the more sand you're going to have to do that's why i use this cartridge paper and i go for cartridge rather than ordinary paper literally because of the texture and how it can take water because I mean, we we did we got quite a bit of water across this, and it's fine. It hasn't buckled or bubbled or done anything. So it is. Yes, it's got recycled coffee cups in it, which is yeah. fantastic. Okay, so it's just it's lovely, it's smooth. It's got a lovely, beautiful, neat edge mm -hmm. all the way around there. Okay dust everywhere so that's fine we've got a way of doing that so for the center which is a little bit trickier just going to come in and make a hole yeah i don't really do craft knives a craft knife will be easier for this but i will be dangerous so <laughs> no it's fine yeah, if anybody doesn't use I'm going to come in as close to the edge as possible do you know what you assign I don't know because um like the manufacturer's card that came in with the packet disappeared ages ago i mean we've had it for about what four years um i would say it's it's between 120 and 150 it's it's nice and light but it's really strong there we go and just roughly do that You would have to do one first and then the other um, because of the hole in the middle. 
um obviously if it's a flat piece it doesn't really matter but it is a lot easier even if it's a solid piece to do one side sand it flip it over and do the other and you can kind of see where you're going so because the sanding block is a little bit too big for the hill i've got a bit of the paper the sandpaper that goes and covers the little end there the side i've got it wrapped around a wooden stick and we're going to come in and make our way around you could if you wanted to just fold this up and come straight in so that was just a lolly stick that um, i think it came off with uh, some rub ones from ages ago <laughs> we have now they're brilliant dies aren't they bev i literally think it's uh infinite the ways you could use them because everyone keeps coming up with different things something else that's very good for doing this are emery boards They work well for doing this, but yeah, any chance I get to uh, cover some in MDF in paper and sand it back, I do. It's just something very satisfying about it, it's the, the feel of it. They're not odd like that. <laughs> it's like the feel of the cardboard under. Uh, under something instead of using foam pads, it's the same kind of thing. Apologies <laughs> if you can't see all of what I'm doing here, it's uh, trying to get into it. any little areas you've got of something you're going to cover and do this too this is a brilliant idea because you've also got the uh the edge here as well which you can get into just makes it so much more professional looks like it's looks like it's manufactured to be like it process with this give it just a little go around like that as well smooth everything down nicely that's it making a lovely mess I've also got is a really old paintbrush and I like to neaten everything up just go around get rid of all the dust and you can do that for the rest of this as well should get 
those out of the way, shouldn't I? Oh, that's a nice idea. So the pressure stuff. Yes, that would be great. I mean, these, if you can, obviously you can get quite big batches of, of um, different wooden shapes and things. So that would be great for gifts. Okay, so that's me and Brian's desk covered. Thanks. Okay, so now we've got our lovely, lovely shape with a beautiful finish to it. And you would think that that had uh, come out of a factory, for want of a better word. There we go. So now we can start assembling everything. So the first thing I'm going to add, so this is like a, just another layer. Are these and I thought it would be quite nice to have them torn so if we place this on so I'm gonna go about here just slightly add torn edges to paper when we're distressing something we can do exactly the same with these and that's going to give us a lovely look. So we can add this into here. Let's get this glued on. slightly as well let's get a bit more glue on the top one a little bit coming in up here so everything uh, matches nicely Oh, thank you, Bev. It's a lovely thing to say. It's great because everyone thinks of something different. Bev's a great team. Bev. And we're just going to. Tear this again, basically down the middle. Oh, hope you're all right, Gail. Okay, and then I'm going to pop this in somewhere in between that one and that one. Which some of that glue still got a bit left over we can use that for something else no problem so I'm just going to cut around here sand this back as well just give that chance to grab okay 
Okay, so while we do that, I'm going to add some of our little dots in, I think. There we go. Backgrounds too. Absolutely love this stencil. It's brilliant. And I've got a black gel pen. Nothing special. So if we just add in roughly where we're going to place things. got a rough idea of where we're going to pop these in. So if we start at the bottom, we place that there. Gel pen is quite good for this because it's not going to uh, seep or drag too much through the paper. Get those in. Add a few extras this time. There we go. And these are going to, if you like, frame these focal points. Put some up there. It's better to do this before you stick the things down, obviously, otherwise you can't lay the stencil over the top or draw your eye into this and these will be holding the uh, the sentiment so just place them where you want them to go Keep going round, position, reposition. Making them slightly smaller the further you get to the top. There we go, so that will do for now. We can add some more in later. marker pen and we're just going to come in and add colour to the insides making our own pattern design Has anybody got any crafty projects on the go? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. Brian's knee deep in DT samples. All the joys of DT. I'm getting some things ready for the next Technique Tuesday. literally just going into the circles, colouring them in. This will coordinate with the 
wooden circles that we've coloured with the black. Link in the text and the stamping of the sunflower. And create some movement for the eye as well. We'll leave that there for the moment. <laughs> I love circles. I love them. <laughs> okay, so now we can sand the edges of these. Okay, give it a nice finish. To do this separately to add in it to the first bit because you wouldn't really know where you were going to put it otherwise because we had that slight overhang Donna, of course they would. As long as you use the stencil, it's fine. Because believe me, if I tried to use, <laughs> if I tried to draw them freehand, it would be a mess. <laughs> Most difficult thing to draw. Okay, and get the other little bit out again from the middle. okay now you just want to find I quite like these two petals that have got the, the folds facing each other to be to be there seems quite pleasing to the eye for me oh. don't look too close with Donna <laughs> Stencil down now. Yes, you can go through the You can keep the stencil there. You could go in with um, paint if you wanted to. Stencil on some paint. Around about there. Give that a nice push down. And because we've stamped this one in the black, that's going to stand out a bit more and provide a focal point. Do I? No. Nah. that dries off before we sand it we can now pop our circles on again just using the same glue this will be fine okay. 
in there. You can measure these out depending on what you're writing. As long as you know that your word is going to fit across, it will be fine. <laughs> you do, Donna, definitely. Great. And they're, they're both reasonably priced as well, which is great. going somewhere like the work sort of range and um, yeah you'll have baskets full of different MDF bits <laughs> yes oh these circles have come from all sorts of places haven't they okay I think we weren't sure firm down you could use a, a clip a big clip to hold these in place if you wanted to make sure that they they stick that they should be fine let's get a little more handmade with the love i also colored the little heart in with the oxide as well just to bring everything together Would be quite nice for uh, popping onto a craft room door. It's quite nice to uh, add some of your handmade pieces to your craft room. So nice and straight. It's going to be a surge in MDF sales. It's just good stuff. It's quite nice to add these onto the top of these. It's a nice little platform, it's a nice little frame. Lay them first so we know how much room we've got and where we're going to pop them. This is where I find my tweezers useful. Yes, we pick up the glossy accents. Some stickles. Whatever you like, whatever thing you're going for. There we go. Keep them as straight as possible in a line, but it really doesn't matter. This is the good thing about uh, arty stuff. It's an expression, so don't worry about it too much. You don't have to go in a straight line. You could uh, pop them going like that. A wonky, yeah. Could use hot glue if you've got it, but uh, I find ordinary PVA is just fine for this, and it will stick. I don't know if anyone else has had problems with finding a, a hot glue that doesn't deteriorate quickly and then everything falls off. Okay. 
used to use it quite a lot, but I got so fed up with it not lasting. Yeah, they're never going to fix that, are they? Last little bit. We'll have this coming off of this little circle. Oh, you're very welcome, Donna. Thank you. It's great because I've been it's sort of, you know, giving me the opportunity to do things that maybe I haven't done for a while or trying something new. Because when you've been crafting for a little while, you tend to forget things, don't you? You know, end up with so many methods and techniques, you forget about uh, using them. I'm doing something like this a project like this is brilliant because if you're hand making gifts for people or just for yourself really for your home it's a lovely thing to do thank you out. Jeanette <laughs> right finish this off just trying to think of things I could uh, Bit onto here that weren't going to take up too much room. I originally wanted to put crafting in progress, but I couldn't fit it on. Or maybe if I'd gone wibbly wobbly, I could have done so. Give it a go. Oh, thank you. Oh, she's sweet. That is. It's amazing what you pick up over the years. Right, last little one. Do you find tweezers are useful? Thank you, Elizabeth. Of course you are. There we go. That's those on there. Yep, Brian said you could definitely add glossy accents to those. So let's just uh, take that off now. I wanted to hang over the edge, of course, it could. <laughs> oh, thank you, Yvonne. I like that. I should add that to a CV. Thank you, Caroline. D on, on this as it's going to be on a door might get knocked or something but if you wanted to that's fine oh Donna thank you brushes because they come in useful for something or other or even to use as decoration as well like we have done and uh, Tracy did with that beautiful piece okay so I think what we need to do now is just add a couple of more little circles bring that design right across <laughs> Even better. Oh. 
Oh, you're welcome. Please do give this a go. It's very satisfying um, and enjoyable. I think you'll, uh, you'll enjoy doing this. I do love working with MDF. I think we all know that now. <laughs> it is. It's brilliant. Because it's, it's solid. It's there. It's in there. Yes, the dies are absolutely fantastic. They're one of those things that you want to use with everything. I'll just pop the lid on my glue because I know what will happen. Clear the decks up. Okay, so that's the one we've made today. It's going to have a little bit. Look. Thank you, Andrine. <laughs> it's going to be a lot of busy people. <laughs> that's the one we did before. Slightly different, which they will be every time, but that's the joy of it. There we go. Obviously, you can do these in any colour you like. Thank you, Rachel. It does, doesn't it, Pam? Perfectly. Oh, you're very, very, very welcome, Julie. Okay, so pop those to one side. I'm just going to run through quickly what I used with these two to show you sort of uh, different ways you can you can go with with MDF. So if I bring this one in first. Okay, move those one side. So this one I've kind of called faux pyrography, which is um, wood burning, which Brian is brilliant at, but I would probably burn the entire house down if I tried it. So it's literally straight onto wood. Only preparation I did. You can give things a little, a little sand. If you think they're gonna gonna bleed too much, it would um, smooth it out enough for you. It's direct stamping onto the wood with um, I used first fine Claire Portobello. Any brown ink would be fantastic. Oh, thank you, everybody. That's fine, Jax. Oh. That's definitely more important, Jax. Okay, so again, this is the MDF base and then the various wooden shapes on top, including the nice little decorated peg. Um, so for this one, so the, the little dots I used oh, from Fresh Floral Flowers. Yes. That would be a good idea. Brian needs to do some more lives, I think. <laughs> yeah. um, the different flowers, I use Julie's hand-picked bouquet and Mary's hand-tied florals around here and on the butterflies themselves. Uh, the sentiment is from Your So Tweet by Kaz. And the bee, obviously, from the Sunflower Bee all-time favourite stamp so I think that just gives a completely different look obviously you can go straight on stamp it let it dry you're done quick and easy 
especially if you're wanting to sell stuff. There we go, so that's that one. And then the Christmas one. I thought it would be quite nice to use Hazel's Christmas things. And I've done a Santa's Magic Key, which are quite popular now because obviously new homes and things don't usually have uh, chimneys. And kids wanted to know how Santa was going to get down the chimney because there wasn't one. So they came up with Santa's Magic Key instead. <laughs> so, so this one, um, the... It was done onto paper just like we've done here and I use Versafine Clay in Strawberry and Spruce which are gorgeous Christmas colours, traditional colours. Um, I use the Square Medley die set, the Square Alphabet Medley stamp set for Santa's Magic Key and Essentially Christmas 1 and 3. All the backgrounds, the snowflakes and the reindeer and the trees. And then again, some more little wooden houses that we had in the stash. A wooden heart, wooden snowflake. This was literally just coloured with alcohol marker. And then some glossy accent, not glossy accent, stickles on here as well. Right, bring that one up. This would be great. To give to a child if they if they don't have a chimney <laughs> there we go these are falling in love with the new versafine claire colors they are gorgeous so that's our door hangers our little mdf set next time we will be looking at a bit of paper piecing i thought that followed on quite nicely Yes, Santa stop here. That would be a good one as well. Mm -hmm. That would be brilliant. Yes, yes. That'd be a great idea. Yeah, please get making and uh, post them onto the Crafty Friends of Julie Hickey Designs group on Facebook. That would be fantastic. I can't wait to see what everyone makes. That's the most exciting bit about it. Thank you, Bev. So, yep, yeah, next time. Um, and it will be Technic Tuesday 30, so I think I might have a little giveaway as well to celebrate. That's in a fortnight's time, paper piecing, different bits and pieces and using our dies, which we uh, tend to forget about, I think, sometimes with the stamps. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining me. Have a fabulous crafty day. Take care and I will see you all in a fortnight. Thank you for joining me. Bye. Bye.